for those who have struggled with their relationship with food, body image, or have experienced and or are currently experiencing an eating disorder, you may be able to relate to me in the fact that you sometimes have mood swings, you have changes in your mood, and sometimes you experience a lot of unwanted and negative emotions around food and around body image. You know what I mean? It is so easy when you are engulfed into this world and a victim of all of this diet culture we see around the media to become fixated on calories, fixated on food, and fixated on what you look like to an unhealthy degree. And that's why in this video, we are going to dive into the link between restrictive diets and depression. And not only that, I'm going to give you three valuable tips that you can take immediately after this video and apply them to your life to begin healing your relationship with food and healing your relationship with body image for the long term. But first, show real. Change is created by doing and taking action. You become so engulfed in the lifestyle, I think I would literally count out 10 hazelnuts, salt them, and slowly savor each hazelnut. I thought that that was the answer. You can't think your way into your best life. Just feeding more into this vicious cycle. 90% of the serotonin produced in our bodies is produced in our gut. I believe in you. For the best body image, self-love, and positive mental health videos, subscribe to my channel because every single Tuesday and every single Friday, we go deep into some of these harder topics to talk about in relationship to disordered eating, body image, loving yourself, and healing from your inner bully so that you can go on to create your truest form of happiness. I would love it if you supported my small channel here on YouTube as it helps me in the algorithm and helps me reach more people. And with that being said, let's get straight into the video. So from six years of struggling with bulimia, hating who I was and being ashamed of my relationship with food, it's fair to say that I spent most of my time fixated on the calories I was eating, the foods that I was eating. I would literally count out 10 hazelnuts, salt them, and slowly savor each hazelnut. Because I was so worried about the calorie intake. But I was obsessed with the way that my body looked in every pair of clothes that I wore. I was obsessed with eating the lowest calorie foods. I was obsessed with restricting myself because I thought that that was the answer to, to all of my problems was to look a certain way or to eat less and less food until I achieved my ideal body type and I just didn't know any better. Now, Two and a half years into my recovery and having started a business around helping people build self-love and reconnect to the love and confidence that they have within themselves and overcome their biggest inner bullies to achieve their truest form of happiness, I have learned quite a bit throughout my years of restrictive dieting and my years of being so engulfed in my eating disorder. And that's why I'm here today to bring you some tips and some information about how the things that you are doing, the actions that you are taking are harming your body and how they are causing you not to love yourself and just feeding more into this vicious cycle of body hatred and self-loathing. And I want to show you that there's another way. So the first thing I really want you to understand is how is it that restrictive dieting can cause depression? Well, just as I said, you become obsessed with the lifestyle. You become obsessed with the foods that you're eating, what type of food, how many calories that food has, what kind of exercise you're gonna do to burn off the calories of that food, what you look like in every single outfit, the binging, the purging, in my case, not every case, but the list goes on. You become so engulfed in the lifestyle that it almost becomes a part of who you are. And the thought of changing that almost seems like you are stripping away something that you sought out to for comfort. The second reason that restrictive diets can cause depression was best put by Lisa Linenfield, a PhD of clinical psychology. And she says, being severely malnourished, which is common in anorexia, can cause physiological changes that are known to negatively affect your mood space. 
your mood states. <laughs> and the same goes for bulimia, because although some of the main factors in the different disordered eating patterns can differentiate, there is still a high likelihood that you are malnourished in one way or another. And doing this kind of damage to your body and to your gut lining and gut microbiome can absolutely cause you to have depression because 90% of the serotonin produced in our bodies is produced in our gut. Meaning, if we are on these restrictive diets and we are doing all of this damage to our bodies, it's no surprise that we are stripping ourselves away from serotonin, the happy chemical, and causing us to feel less than perfect in our minds and in our bodies. So now that you have a better understanding of how restricted diets can cause depression, what can we do about it to start taking steps in a positive direction towards increasing the amount of food that we need for our bodies to function properly and to achieve a healthy weight in the right way and in the long-term and sustainable way? Let's get right into that. But first, if you have found this valuable in any way and there's something that you've been able to take out of this so far, I would love it if you took a moment to like this video and comment down below so I know that there's an interest in videos like these and that you're here with me and that you understand and that you're finding value out of this. It really helps me in the YouTube algorithm and I appreciate you guys so much for helping me spread this positive message. So, actions. What can we do about it? We wanna create change. We want better for ourselves in our life. I'm so proud of you. Let's go. Number one, identify what that pain is. Without a true knowing of why you're feeling depressed or less than in any way, you can't actively going about changing it in the most healthy and effective way possible. And the answer to this question is probably not what you think it is. Because very commonly, people who experience disordered eating patterns also have some childhood traumas or emotional turmoil that has yet to be dealt with. So by feeding into our urges or our desires that aren't serving us, we feel like we are in control, as if food is the only thing that we can control. Which is ironic because then sometimes you feel completely out of control. So my recommendation to truly uncover the secrets behind why you're really upset or really hurting is to write about it. Every time you notice yourself having these urges to binge or urges to restrict, urges to over-exercise or any body hatred comments, take an extra moment to notice what those comments are saying to you and write them down because what will happen is over a couple of days or a couple of weeks, however long you need, you'll start making the connection as to when these voices are coming up. What are they saying to you? What actions led up to this voice coming your way? So write it in the notes of your phone, write it out on a sheet of paper, but actively write it because even if you think you know the answer, change is created by doing and taking action. You can't think your way into your best life. You need a combination of a strong mindset and powerful action. So if you're with me, like this video, let's do this together. I believe in you. So the next thing that I would encourage you to do after a period of time of doing that first step is kind of a play on of that first step. And it's to take what you have written down, take what you know about yourself now and go even deeper than that. How do we do that? Why is that relevant? 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 What do you call an elephant that doesn't matter? Irrelevant? Anyways, so we do this by asking ourselves why. Why, why, why? Because again, the answer to what's really going on is always deeper than what we think. So let me play a scenario for you, a, a short scenario that you can elaborate on and uniquely customize it to whatever you're experiencing right now. So why do I feel the need to restrict? Because I ate so much yesterday. Why does it matter if you ate as much as you did? Because I don't want to be fat. Why does it matter if you gain weight? Why does it matter if you feel you're fat? I can't gain weight. I don't want to be ugly. I can't be ugly. You see what I did there? So now you know the deeper you go, the more you ask yourself why, you realize that the reason has come from wanting to lose weight, wanting to look a certain way, to feeling ugly. To which you then might ask yourself, 
why would I feel that? Or why would I think that I'm ugly? Or what's wrong with being ugly? And then you might say, I'll never find love. Ding, 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 we're getting farther. This is great work, even though it can be emotional because now the problem is that you are you fear that you won't find love and you've tied the idea that you're not finding love because you look a certain way. So now there's a different root problem that we can use to help us change our beliefs around that and find healthier alternatives other than restricting our calories. So play with this, take as much time as you need. I believe in you. So at this point, we have a better idea of where these feelings are truly coming from. And I'm going to end it right here because I know this can be a lot to digest, but this is really going to set in for you when you actually put into practice what I'm saying. Don't let this be another video that you just watch and then walk away from. Stop right now. You don't need to watch another video until you take some sort of action in a positive direction. And if you would like me to create a video specifically on how to limit some of the fear around incorporating foods back into your diet and how to mitigate some of the, yeah, some of the fear and some of the negative emotions that you might feel because of that, but you truly want better for yourself, let me know in the comments below that that's a video you would be interested in so I know that there's a desire for it. But I know I've taken up a lot of your guys' time now. Um, start with that. Come back. We have amazing videos coming within the next couple of weeks. I'm giving you guys all access to my online course, Let's Get Body Lovin', a beginner's step by step guide to loving and accepting your body right now. It's for $27 for lifetime access. You get access to me as your coach for one month. The course price is gonna change from $27 to $497 once I, I'm really looking for a professional studio right now so I can re-record the whole thing, but so much value is packed into it and you won't have to pay the extended price. So I'll leave that down below. Follow me on Instagram for more. We are going to continue this conversation. I love you guys. I'm sending you good energy. My Instagram is at Edengold underscore. And with that being said, I'll catch you in the next one.